a man. You better have a partner ready for action because otherwise, um, yeah, your libido is going to be problematic because you don't know where to put it. And these calloused hands due to bodybuilding are not going to do that much good to your private parts. Vigor Steve here. Let's talk about libido. It's been a while since I made a video about libido last because, well, every time I make a video about libido, it gets demonetized or limited monetization, as they say here on YouTube. Apparently, YouTube doesn't like anything that has to do with libido. So it's really up to you guys to boost the algorithm on this one. Please like the video, leave a comment, maybe two comments or three comments if you have the time to do so at the beginning of the video, the middle of the video, and at the end of the video. And subscribe if you're new to the channel so you can join the vigorous crew. And hopefully, this video about libido solving a lot of problems all over the world can reach a very vast audience and again, solve problems worldwide. Funny thing is that all my libido videos get a ton of views. So let's get into it right away. This video is about a problematic libido stack. If you suffer from low libido, self-induced low libido due to the use of performance enhancing drugs, this is the video for you. We're going to get that right back to the highest level you probably ever had. And now your libido is so high that it's highly problematic. First things first, it doesn't matter how many performance enhancing drugs you take and how well you follow this protocol. If you suffer from tremendous amounts of stress, your libido is not going to be that great. It might restore to somewhat acceptable levels, but if you're highly stressed due to school, work, financial situations, the pandemic, the global economic crisis, whatever, if you're under a lot of stress, try to address that first. Stress kills your libido more than anything else. So that's something you really have to address first. And, you know, depending on the stressful situation that you find yourself in, you might not even have enough benefits from something like ashwick on the root extract or emodin or phosphatidylserine or a combination thereof. Sometimes you really have to tackle the stress at the root cause and remove the stressor from your life. Now, if that's stress from your partner, right, your partner is giving you a hard time and that's why your libido is horrible, remove the partner. If your work is giving you a hard time, resulting in you being stressed at home, killing your libido, remove the work. Now, of course, during the pandemic or during an economic crisis, that's easier said than done. Still, if you're coming home stressed out of your mind because the whole day you were running around at your job, now, you might want to find a job somewhere else. Personally, I make money doing what I love. That's guiding people through their performance enhancing drug journey. I do that on a daily basis, six and a half days a week. I take half a Sunday off. But I'm still in contact with people who need a little bit of guidance. So I'm basically working every single day of the week. But I have a low stress environment because I do what I love. I make money this way. And the burden of financial restrictions is completely off the table because I set the pace on how much money I make. And, you know, due to social media, the money is actually quite good. So that's a low stress environment. If you're currently employed, stress out of your mind, I can highly recommend going the self-employment route and also making money doing what you love. If you lost respect for your partner or you're not with the right person, right, you have a little bit of altercations back and forth multiple times per week, this also kills your libido. And if that is not something you can address with counseling or talking that out, with your partner, it's better to move on. Again, you can't get your libido back if you don't have love and appreciation or respect for your partner. That's ultimately the person that you're going to do the deed with. So if there's an issue there, you might want to change your partner and get your libido back with another partner or maybe a multitude of partners if you're getting back in the market and you feel like you're, you know, you're trying to catch up on lost time. And as many people in the bodybuilding community already know, if you're in a chronic caloric deficit, or in a severe micronutrient deficient state, your libido is going to be horrible also. I mean, how many people in the fitness community do diets once, twice, maybe three times per year to get to that nasty, freaky physique with very low body fat levels? Guess what? At the end of their diets, they're not thinking about sex or libido or anything of physical activity in the bedroom. They're thinking about cake and ice cream and pancakes and whatever you know, um, the candy they really enjoyed eating in their younger years. That's what they're thinking about. They're not thinking about having sex once, twice, three times per day, which is ultimately what this protocol is going to do to you if you follow it to the end. So if you're 
dieting all the time because you want to stay in shape. You have this phenomenal physique, but no libido to put this physique to work. It's kind of counterproductive. So you might want to take a step back on your diet, reintroduce some of the calories. In many cases, increasing your fat intake, especially animal meat-based sources. So that's whole eggs, some salmon, some steak, and perhaps some avocado or mixed nuts on top. But from my personal experience, I would say that fat coming from animal meat sources does more for your libido compared to fat coming from plant sources. Again, that's my personal preference and personal experience. Might not work for you, but it's still a guideline you can follow. So if you have your nutrition in place, you increase your fat intake and your overall caloric intake, you're no longer in this dieting mode. And maybe you cut the cardio back to 20, 30 minutes upon waking for heart health and you ensure that you get sufficient amounts of micronutrients in over the course of the day because it's ultimately the micronutrients that contribute to testosterone production which you're going to stimulate with ACG more than that later and semen production as well. I'll list all of the micronutrients and over-the-counter supplements you could take to improve your fertility and semen parameters on the screen right now. Again keep in mind this is not necessarily a stack to improve your overall testosterone concentrations for that, I'm assuming that you're already on TRT as part of this performance enhancing drug protocol, which we're going to discuss shortly. So if you want to find out how you can improve your testosterone concentrations, I'll link a video about that at the end of this one. This is purely about improving libido to the maximum. And while we're on the subject of increasing your calories and your overall micronutrient intake, we can take some hints from the animal kingdom during summer when it's time to propagate there's a lot of food available, whether that's other animals or plants that are growing. When the animal kingdom gets busy, it's because there's going to be food plenty for the next couple of months while the females are carrying the offspring, right? Now, for humans, we have food plenty all the time, but we choose to restrict our calories and we choose not to eat nutritious food. So we're kind of doing it to ourselves that way. So if you want to have your libido at a phenomenal state, make sure you treat your body accordingly by giving it nutritious foods in at least a caloric sufficient state, but a slight caloric surplus would be highly beneficial for maximum libido. And that brings us to the performance enhancing drugs, but also the recreational drugs, which are known to kill your libido as well. So if you're on these particular PEDs or RECs, even if you add in the PEDs which are going to improve your libido, it might still not be entirely favorable because it's these PEDs, these other PEDs, and direct drugs that are suppressing it down to the gutter. For example, wheat or kratom are known to increase prolactin levels quite substantially. Now, for some people, they kind of get used to this prolactin secreting effect of wheat and kratom. So maybe over time, the prolactin levels kind of balance out. But from what I see, a lot of guys that smoke wheat or take Kratom on a frequent basis, multiple times per week, their prolactin levels are quite elevated. And besides elevated cortisol levels, I would say that the second worst hormone within your body for overall libido and certainly for your refractory period, which is the time in between ejaculations and the overall intensity of your ejaculation, is prolactin. So you want to keep that within favorable ranges, let's say middle bottom of the reference range, for you to have a normal or heightened sense of libido and a normal refractory period so you can have consecutive orgasms if you do so desire. I mean, as you get older, you probably turn into a one-hit wonder. You get the job done properly and then you get back to work. That's another benefit of being self-employed. You don't have to limit yourself to that evening window. At the end of the day, you can get busy whenever you want, right? Assuming that your partner is also self-employed and roaming around the house freely just as you are. When you're younger though, right, you might have to go multiple times per day because you have to really take care of your problematic libido. You go to the club, you come home, you take care of business, your prolactin levels are nicely suppressed or at least no higher than the middle of the reference range. And then you go to the after hours club for second rounds, right? I mean, that's what I did when I was in my 20s. And besides the weed and the kratom, I mean, MDMA or some of its derivatives or GHB or some of its precursors, the 1,4-GB and GBL, they're highly inflammatory. That makes you sick also. So your prolactin levels might not be increased from those drugs, but you're in such an inflammatory state that you feel a little bit sickly and you can't get ultimate libido or proper boners because you feel slightly off. So again, really limit the recreational drugs to 
well, hopefully zero, right? Because you're already taking performance enhancing drugs and I don't think you should combine those together because it's a lot of strain in your liver and your heart. So keep that in mind. And regarding the performance enhancing drugs, I mean, Anadrol is known to interact with the estrogen receptor and might potentially increase prolactin levels. Nandrolone certainly does. Even at a low dose of 200 milligrams per week, you see that prolactin levels tend to go up in some individuals. With Trembolone, it's a little bit dependent on the person. Some people see that their prolactin levels really go high and other people notice that they get a tremendous libido boost. Their prolactin levels don't really budge, but they get this animalistic libido from Trembolone. And that's why some people swear by Trembolone because it's part of their porn star stack. Then Trestolone mint is also known to increase prolactin levels. Of course, Dianabol converting into methyl estradiol is known to alter your libido to that extent because methyl estradiol is a little bit metabolism resistant, can affect your libido to a certain extent. So you really have to be on top of which performance enhancing drugs you're taking and which dose is the effective dose and which dose is the problematic dose that reduces your libido. So my recommendation to you guys is just to take all of those out. If any of the PEDs affect your libido negatively, and it goes for finasteride and dutasteride as well, but it might be a very long trajectory to really resolve post-finasteride or post-dutasteride issues because DHT levels are chronically suppressed. To be fair, that's an entire video topic just by itself. Let me know down below in the comment section if you would like to see a video discussing post-finasteride or post-dutasteride syndrome and how to get over that in a hurry so you don't have to wait months on end for that libido issue to resolve itself or the erectile dysfunction to resolve itself. Figure out which PEDs or which reg drugs are inhibiting your libido. Take those out, let them metabolize. And while all of those are detoxifying and clearing from your system, we can start looking into our overall hormone balance. I've mentioned this many times on this YouTube channel, the ideal balance between your neural steroids and your sex hormones. So long story short, a quick debriefing. When you take performance enhancing drugs, TRT or anything above that, you downregulate the relation between sex hormones and neurosteroids. Yes, you're supplementing with testosterone. You can control how much testosterone you're putting into your body. You can also control how much testosterone is converting into estradiol by manipulating your injection frequency or manipulating your body fat levels where most of the aromatization is occurring. And of course, you can also look into something like an aromatized inhibitor or a DHT derivative like Primabol and Mastron, for example, which act as a reversely binding aromatized inhibitor, preventing the conversion of testosterone into estradiol, and you can control your estradiol levels that way. But many people neglect that the HPTA, the luteinizing hormone, also acts at the adrenal gland level. The adrenal glands produce DHEA and pregnenolone, which are neurosteroids, precursors for cortisol or other corticotropic hormones and testosterone downstream. So while this is downregulated, your testosterone levels are quite high. People don't really know how to manage their estradiol levels well. And then you see that pregnenolone and DHEA concentrations, as well as your pregnenolone sulfate and DHEA sulfate levels, which act as a reservoir for free pregnenolone and free DHEA, which are biologically active, but the sulfate versions are not, you basically, by going on TRT or by going on a steroid cycle, your neurosteroids end up at elderly levels. Right? You're doing this to yourself. But you can easily supplement these in or use human chorionic gonadotropin, ACG, which also interacts with the luteinizing hormone receptor within the adrenal glands and also in the testicles, to help you produce decent amounts of DHEA and pregnenolone again. Now, as you get older, this signaling at the adrenal gland level might still not be sufficient. So with me, for example, and I see the same thing with many of the consultation clients that I have that are over 40 years old, myself having used performance enhancing drugs for over a decade, even when I take 250 IOS to 500 IOS ACG three times per week, my DHEA and pregnenolone concentrations are still not optimal. They're at the middle of the range, but I want them at the top of the reference range. So when I take 500 IOS ACG, which seems to be the highest effective dose you can take, after which testosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone levels 
don't seem to increase that much anymore, but it's mostly the esterone and the estradiol that seems to go up. So that's the dose of diminishing returns, 500 IOS ACG three times per week. So let's say you take 250 to 500 IOS ACG and your DHA and pregnenolone levels are still not favorable, even though my total testosterone, free testosterone, and bioavailable testosterone are all at the top or slightly over the reference range. On a TRT dose, that seems to be the case. Estradiol is also favorable at the top of the reference range, but just supplementing with ACG, DHA and pregnenolone are only in the middle of the reference range. So I would need to supplement pregnenolone and DHEA on top of the ACG to get favorable levels. Personally, for normal libido and heightened libido, I would like to see all of my hormones at the top of the reference range. And then based on your individual response to high testosterone, high estradiol, high DHEA, and high pregnenolone, you can manipulate these vectors. So if you prefer to feel higher testosterone levels maybe once or twice over the reference range, so let's say 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 nanograms per deciliter while keeping everything else at the top of the reference range, that's your personal preference. Right? Do your blood work, assess that, and make slight modifications, seeing how you feel and how it affects your libido. You can do the same thing with estradiol. Some people feel better with higher estradiol levels. Their testosterone is 1,000 nanograms per deciliter, but their estradiol is between 50 to 75 picograms per milliliter. DHA and pregnenolone at the top of the reference range, this is where their libido is most favorable. And keep in mind that estradiol also plays a highly regulatory role in your libido. Testosterone aromatizes into estradiol, but there's three different estrogens. You have esterone, E1, estradiol, E2, and estriol, E3, and there's a E4, estradiol, I believe, but that's only present in pregnant states in women. So that's something me and my male audience doesn't really have to worry about. The three different estrogens that you have in your body, you want to have a nice balance between all three of them. But testosterone metabolizes into estradiol, and that means your estrone and estriol levels might be slightly lower than your estradiol levels. So you create a skewed ratio. You can take a supplement called dindylmethane. It's an over-the-counter supplement. I'll link it down below. 100 to 200 milligrams per day. This helps with the balance between these three different estrogens. Luckily for us, 250 IOS ACG also helps in the production of esterone. So you produce a decent amount of esterone, a decent amount of estradiol. Some of the estradiol is coming from the testosterone that you're supplementing as part of your TRT protocol or slightly higher. And both of those, esterone and estradiol, will then convert into estriol. Now you have a nice balance between these three different estrogens. They're all slightly towards their respective reference ranges, just like the testosterone, the DHEA, and pregnenolone. And this causes all of the intermediary hormones, which there are many, to be sufficient as well. Now finally, after all of that, you have a perfectly balanced ratio between your sex hormones and your neurosteroids. Don't mess it up. I'll put it on the screen. Leave it here while all the other performance enhancing drugs and the recreational drugs are metabolizing from your body. So it's TRT completely optimized. Keep it here and then you can start looking into other hormones which can heighten your libido to the next level, starting with serotonin. Serotonin plays a regulatory role in your libido as well. Now, of course, serotonin, dopamine, many of the neurotransmitters, excitatory amino acids, they all contribute to libido. So you don't have to start supplementing or really start looking into drugs that are going to modify your neurotransmitters. What I would say that is something like 5-HTP, which provides building blocks for serotonin can be beneficial 100 to 200 milligrams before bed. Just a fair warning here, if you're currently taking a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or another antidepressant, then it's probably not a good idea to supplement with 5-HTP at any dose because that could lead to serotonin syndrome. Now, personally, I've been taking fluvoxamine for the last couple of months. That's an SSRI. I haven't supplemented with 5-HTP for a very long time now. If you guys would like to see a video about my personal experience with fluvoxamine and how it affected my sick drive and my overall quality of life, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll gladly make that video for you. Some people do notice that their libido goes down while using an SSRI. Personally, that's not something I experience, but it could be because my sex hormones and my neurosteroids are perfectly balanced. I'm doing some of the other compounds, which we'll discuss after this one. 
Now, regarding your dopamine system, of course, dopamine has a downregulating effect on your prolactin levels. So if your prolactin levels are slightly elevated and you would like to bring them down, one of the over-the-counter supplements you can look into is vitamin B6 P5P. Again, this is a temporary solution to reduce your prolactin levels. I would still look into the recreational drugs or the performance enhancing drugs, which are causing your prolactin levels to be elevated or the stressful situation that causes your prolactin to be elevated, even though there's some evidence that cortisol might actually suppress prolactin levels. So you'll have to address the root cause before you start suppressing your prolactin levels with supplements or drugs. Vitamin B6, P5P, 200 to 300 milligrams per day is known to increase your dopamine levels. Personally, I prefer to stimulate my dopaminergic and serotonergic system with 50 milligrams modafinil per day. This keeps my prolactin levels nicely within the reference range, whereas previously there were maybe the three quarters or top of the reference range at certain periods of time when I was taking nandrolone or doing other things that might increase my prolactin levels. So even though modafinil isn't directly known to heighten your libido, it might still have a contributing effect because modafinil is known to improve your moods and it can also keep your prolactin levels within its favorable ranges. And if the productivity dose of modafinil isn't sufficient to bring your prolactin levels down to libido favorable ranges, then there's always cabergoline or another dopamine receptor agonist. The problem with dopamine receptor agonists is that they have a negative effect on the heart with chronic use. So if you see on your blood work parameters that your prolactin levels are sky high and your libido is bottomed out, then in that case, a single serving of 0.25 milligrams cabergoline once, not multiple times per week, not chronically, just once, is more than enough to bring your prolactin levels down. In many cases, to the bottom of the reference range, that's all it takes, a single dose of a quarter milligram cabergoline brings prolactin down quite substantially. Again, it's a dopamine receptor agonist, so it comes with a laundry list of side effects, single use only as needed when blood work proves that your prolactin levels are far above the reference range. Still, I would rather look into what is actually causing your prolactin to be elevated. So if that's due to performance enhancing drugs or recreational drugs, take those out. Don't add something else in that's kind of the wrong way to approach it now i know you guys have selective hearing so you're going to do exactly the opposite of what i'm just recommending you're going to go on trend and cable line for the overall porn star stack again that's your body your responsibility but well fuck it i will confirm for you guys that that specific combination of trend blown and cable line will give you angry animalistic sex drive I do have fond memories of that specific combination, but now that I know more about the potential short-term and long-term side effects of Trembolone and Cabergoline just by themselves, and maybe in combination it's even worse, now that I understand the potential negative health ramifications, I would rather stay clear and look into the other things that we're discussing in this video. If you want to optimize your dopaminergic system besides modafinil and vitamin B6, P5P, glutamate, one of the excitatory amino acids which I alluded to earlier in this video, helps to regulate healthy dopamine levels. Glutamate both facilitates and inhibits dopamine secretion. And when your dopamine levels are completely optimized or healthy concentrations at all times, then your prolactin levels are going to be optimal for favorable libido as well. Now, you don't have to go supplement with monosodium glutamate. So don't be, again, with selective hearing, you write down on your shortlist, Trend Caber MSG. That's the wrong approach. All you have to do is eat healthy foods. Glutamate is found in many different food sources that we tend to eat in bodybuilding. So all you need to do is actually just pay attention to your nutrition. So you got your glutamate intake covered. You don't need to specifically start supplementing glutamate for optimal dopamine levels. As long as you eat some meat, some fish, perhaps some cheese or milk. S several different mushrooms contain glutamate, as well as many of the different vegetables that we tend to eat for our fitness aspirations also contain glutamate. Monosodium glutamate is the wrong kind of glutamate, so avoid that. Avoid processed foods. Don't go on the processed foods plus MSG, kratom and wheat bandwagon. That will kill your libido. That's horrible for dopamine levels and horrible for your prolactin levels. So pay attention to your nutrition. You got your glutamate covered. That will result in favorable dopamine as well as favorable prolactin levels for a heightened or at least optimal libido. All right, I think that pretty much covers how to optimize your internal hormone balance for favorable libido and remove all of the issues 
out of your life that could have a negative effect on your libido. Now let's take this average or adequate libido to the next level by discussing the actual problematic libido stack. You only need a couple different compounds besides the TRT protocol which I discussed earlier. You don't need Cialis or Viagra or Levitra. Those don't really do anything to heighten your libido, even though they can improve the quality of your erections. So if you want to go on 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams of Cialis to help control your blood pressure and take your boners uh, up a notch, so to say, feel free to do so. I mean, you can get a comparable effect from some of the angiotensin receptor blockers like Lozartan or Valsartan, for example. So whatever direction you go to enhance your erection quality, that's entirely up to you. Right here, I want to discuss the melanocortin receptors as well as adrenocorticotropic hormone. I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with melanotan too, to improve your tan when you go to the beach, but you only have a short amount of time to get a deep, rich tan going for you. One of its variants, PT141, also known as bromelanotides, brand name Vilesi, is known to improve libido quite dramatically, whereas melanotan 2, the libido is a side effect, right? It also acts on the melanocortin receptors, which are responsible for heightened libido. But melanotan also makes you freaking nauseous. So the effective dose of, let's say, 0.5 to 1 milligram of melanotan 2, you mostly get a significant tan out of it, with flushing and nausea as a side effect, and perhaps a libido boost as an afterthought an hour or two after the administration. First, you have to write out the nausea, and of course the flushing which happens following a melanotan 2 injection. And then if you're lucky, maybe two hours later you get slight libido boost. Hopefully by the time your nausea is gone, so you can actually utilize that libido increase that you might experience momentarily. Still, the timing is a little bit annoying. That's why we have PT-141. Many people report that PT-141 might take a couple days to really build up. So it might take a couple hours after a 0.5 to 1 milligram PT-141 administration before your libido actually increases. If you use it daily, yes, you will still get a tan. But from my personal experience, I didn't get any nausea following 1 milligram PT-141 injections. In the beginning, it may take a couple hours before your libido gets heightened. But when your body gets used to it, or maybe a saturation point has been reached, then the libido increases within let's say 20 to 30 minutes. So you might have a loading phase, so to say, for PT-141 at one milligram per day. After your body gets used to this melanocortin stimulation, once this loading phase has occurred, then you can use PT-141 occasionally and administer that, let's say, about 30 minutes before you expect to get busy in the bedroom or the kitchen sink or the sofa or another location of your preference no rush though, bromelanotide PT-141 has a half-life of approximately three hours. No need to rush, you have plenty of time, the timing is not that narrow. Now, PT-141 agonizes most of the melanocortin receptors, predominantly melanocortin receptor 3 and 4, with the exception of melanocortin receptor 2. This is the receptor that adrenocorticotropic hormone acts on. We can take adrenocorticotropic hormone in supplemental form, but it is available as a partial sequence, amino acid sequence 4 to 10. This drug is called Cimax. I have several different videos discussing Cimax and Selang already on this YouTube channel. I'll link them at the end of this one. For now, I just want to say that Cimax heightened my libido to the next level. So at the time, I was experimenting with Cimax, PT-141, and oxytocin, which is very beneficial in this protocol. That's coming up shortly after. I do find that Cimax is a lot more favorable for libido compared to PT-141. As of now, it hasn't been assessed if Cimax actually interacts with the melanocortin 1 and 2 receptors, even though melanocortin 2 is the target of adrenocorticotropic hormone, which Cimax is a partial sequence of. Cimax did not inhibit the melanocortin 3 receptor, but might still activate it, and it could be a partial antagonist and agonist of the melanocortin 4 and 5 receptors. Now, the data is not actually very conclusive. Again, most of the research on Cimax and Selang, for that matter, have been performed in Russia. This drug hasn't been investigated to the same extent that Vilesi or, for example, Cialis has regarding libido or overall erectile functioning. So keep that in mind, the evidence is quite limited. Still, there's plenty of anecdotal reports out there online about how Cimax improved people's libido. And that's the same thing that I noticed. 
after a couple days of consecutive use, 500 micrograms Cimax internasally upon waking and sometimes a second dose pre-workout or post-workout. Again, I was initially using Cimax to help mitigate some of the post-exercise brain fog. And after a couple days of continuous usage, I started to notice that my libido was getting increasingly heightened. I started getting more receptive to outside stimulation. I started to notice that it was getting more calm. Again, Cimax acts as an antidepressant and an anxiolytic by activating the serotonergic and dopaminergic system, something which I discussed earlier on in this video, which contributes to libido highly. Cimax also has a positive effect on how your body responds to DHEA. So by having a favorable hormone balance between the sex hormones and the neurosteroids, Cimax is able to make you more receptive to the DHEA, which is floating around in your body by activating the serotonergic and dopaminergic system, acting as an angiolytic, makes you very, very receptive, very talkative with a heightened libido 24-7. Dosages starting at 500 micrograms upon waking and perhaps a second dose in the afternoon. I did not experience any of this with Selenc. So if you go with any of these hormones to improve your libido out of all the choices that we have, I would forego Melanotan 2. I would forego PT1 for 1. I would forego Selenc, even though it's also known to increase brain-derived neurotropic factor. I didn't get any libido boost from Selenc. And even though I got a libido boost from PT1 for 1, it's not anywhere close to the libido boost I got from Cimax. But my libido started getting really problematic, almost unmanageable, when I started experimenting with oxytocin. At the time, I was already using Cimax and wanted to see if oxytocin could help in any way, shape, or form with strenuous leg workouts, which it certainly does. Again, oxytocin plays a regulatory role in social bonding, reproduction, sexual activity, childbirth, the moments after childbirth when you're bonding with the baby, again, that's only with females, not with men, which most of my audience is. I started to experiment with oxytocin before leg days to see if I could get a positive association with these strenuous leg days, which are always the hardest workout of the week, which it certainly did. My leg days became ultra pleasurable, a very positive association with training to failure on particular exercises and far beyond. So my leg days were legendary after taking maybe 20, 40, sometimes 100 IUs, oxytocin pre-workouts. But again, the overlap of that, because I was also using Cimax at that time, and my hormone balance was perfectly optimized, is that my libido started to get problematic. So instead of using oxytocin for your leg day and get through your leg day a little bit more enjoyably, start using your oxytocin. Again, the dose highly depends on your tolerance and how much you need. So some of my clients started using Cimax and oxytocin maybe twice, three times per week on top of that protocol. Daily Cimax use, intermittent oxytocin use. And most of us noticed that you need to continuously bump up the dose. So maybe with twice a week, you don't really notice a difference. 20 IUs, 30 IUs, 50 IUs, whatever your sweet spot is, is sufficient. You can keep it at that dose, taken about an hour before sexual activity. But if you start to use it every day, you might end up at 200 IUs or 500 IUs, which is an insane dose. You might experience a little bit of flushing as a side effect of very high dosages of oxytocin. So I would use oxytocin intermittently. Again, when you know you're about to get busy, instead of dosing the PT1 for one, you can look into Cimax a month on, month off with intermittent oxytocin use. You put all of that together and man, you better have a partner ready for action because otherwise, um, yeah, your libido is going to be problematic because you don't know where to put it. And these calloused hands due to bodybuilding are not going to do that much good to your private parts. So this is pretty much the stack. I'll put it on the screen for you guys to take notes, take heed. It's a very enjoyable protocol. Again, you might have to modify it a little bit. If you do enjoy your Cialis, feel free to add that in for those optimal boners. And when your libido is really this heightened, again, make sure you have a partner on standby that can keep up with you or have multiple partners on standby, which you can booty call on a moment's notice or better yet, go work in the adult entertainment industry so you have access to sex 24 seven and actually get paid for it. If you're extroverted enough to deal with all of the cameras, there's always a way to get around problematic libido if you take it to the next level. You just have to be nice and manage it 
accordingly and otherwise well. This is going to be your best friend. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find all of the supplements which I discussed down below in the YouTube description section. Contact me directly for consultations if you need help with your libido. And if it's still an issue after following a protocol like this, I can always help. I've helped many guys out there fix their libido after they've gone through all of my libido related videos on my YouTube channel. Ebooks are still available on my website. Have a look at some of my affiliates and sponsors so you can save yourself some money while shopping online. More affiliates and sponsors on my website. Discount codes galore. If you're looking for something specific, specific articles, bookmark my website, vigorsteve.com. A ton of free information there. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Max libido 24-7. But luckily, it's not problematic because my partner is very supportive. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.